Hello there. Today I got an interesting topic. This was a request from the comments to just kind of talk about what do I do with all the items I get? What's my general item strategy? And just what I keep my eyes peeled for with all the items you get throughout the day. So I've already done my dailies video for the day, but I kind of simulated what your inventory might look like after the end of a full round of dailies for the day, whichever ones you do, if that includes pick your own or apple bobbing or whatever you might get into with your daily. So I'm just going to assume, you know, that you watch all the dailies videos, you get a random ass looking inventory like I do <laughs> at the end of the day. But what do I do with all those items? So when you're starting out or when I'm starting out, my focus is always building that Neopoint wealth. So when I'm in the very, 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 very beginning stages of building wealth, I sell pretty much everything, even the one NP items, because all that adds up. As you get a little bit more comfortable and you get a little bit more money, then there's a little bit more room to, to play with your items and and kind of save and scrimp for what you want to do. Most people get into safety deposit box hoarding just because they're looking for that pack rat avatar. I've obtained this one a few months ago now, but basically to get the pack rat avatar, you just need a thousand unique items in your inventory. So if you're starting with that premise and you're working towards that avatar, it's an easy just bloop throw everything in the safety deposit box for the day using the quick stock and start saving items working towards that avatar that way. So you might be used to this quick stock screen, but this is where you can easily put items in your shop, easily put items in your safety deposit box or donate or discard items quickly. If you're working on gallery, there's also that gallery option there. But let's say, you know, I'm kind of in the middle of working on some things. What, what am I doing with all these items? Again, if I'm towards the beginning stages of wealth building, I am selling selling tan code stones, period. I, I am selling those. You can turn those for 3K up to 45K with the EO, the way that that's inflated now. If I'm doing training on Croc Island, I would be keeping and using these doubloon coins. If you're done with Croc Island training, you might choose to sell these. You can generally get about 1K for a one doubloon coin. Um, I think it's about 2K for those two doubloon coins. So that's another option that you can choose to sell. After I get past that point, of feeling the need to sell everything that I don't immediately need, that's when I start hitting maybe that threshold of if I think I could get a minimum of a thousand for an item, then I will turn around and sell it. I, lately, I've been doing a little bit less of that and then just shoving everything in my safety deposit box, but that's usually the benchmark I, I look towards because, you know, if I can sell 10 items for a thousand Neo points, that's 10,000 Neo points that goes in my bank. And it's just that little inc incremental progress that I really enjoy doing. And that's just my personal cash saving method. The other reason I've been leaning a lot more towards just straight up hoarding is because I am preparing for a few things. I'm preparing for potential items for the coincidence. I'm preparing for what next year's fairy festival might look like. I'm preparing for what we, we don't know what this plot is going to look like, and there have been historical cases of plots requiring players to input items in order to participate or get something back. So in general, I do I do veer lately more towards just, just hoarding everything. The other reason I like to hoard items in addition to the coincidence is I do play employment agency a lot. Um, a lot of those dice or roux foods, which we'll talk about in a little bit, will be helpful for employment agency. So there, there's a couple other activities I do that it just makes it helpful to have, you know, a loaded safety deposit box. The other type of hoarding I do is speculative hoarding. So for example, all of the morphing potions I might happen across, I have been saving those and sitting on them in hopes that they will eventually rebound. Like this electric mohog morphing potion, for example, that started getting released with the daily quest log and it has tanked in price a lot. I'm banking on the fact that Hopefully in a year, two years, we'll likely see that removed from the weekly quest prize pool and those prices will start increasing. This is a long play. This is a long-term strategy and it's just something I'm choosing to do. The other category of items I do this with are stamps. The reason I do it with stamps in particular is because we've seen some crazy price fluctuations with stamps over the years. And once you put a stamp into the stamp album, you can't take it back out. So these can be considered riskier items or a consumable item if you want to look at it that way. So I've also been parking on a lot of stamps. There's also some of these lower rarity stamps that get churned out a lot, which also happen to come in handy for the coincidence sometimes. Let's go take a peek at the coincidence pool just to get that out of the way since I'll be mentioning the coincidence a lot. <laughs> 
So there is a standard known pool of items that might be requested for the coincidence. Almost all of these come from underwater fishing or tombola. So that's another reason to just chuck what you get from fishing or tombola into your safety deposit box. This one comes from Lunar Temple. So all of these are tied to dailies. And then some of these other requested items, there's an alternate pool that you might get. All of these items looks like it is generally generated from a daily of some kind. So if you are just saving all your stuff from dailies, like it, it is a really good idea to start playing the coincidence. Even if you don't like buy everything every day, you can still you know, generally have a lot of this stuff just from doing your dailies every day and making sure to save it instead of turning around and, and selling it. Because a lot of the times these items too, when it's not being inflated by everybody looking for it for the coincidence, will still be in that one to 100 neo point range and saving up money that way can feel like a slog sometimes. But that that's the goal of the coincidence is to recycle some of these um, repetitive dailies items. So you'll see me hoarding a lot of these items often just so I can easily play the coincidence. You can also find some of these extra items in the money tree a lot and that is generally what I'm looking for when I am camping out at the money tree is just items that will fill up my potential grabs for the coincidence game. So in addition to your dailies, there are some other item generating activities like pick your own, which I've already completed pick your own for the day just to get some berries in this inventory. Another thing I like to do to generate items is to play Diceru. Diceru generates items that are very helpful for employment agency. And you also get a chance to get a neg, which you can turn around and sell the neg for anywhere between 20 to 40 K just kind of depends on the day and depends on the market. Um, those fluctuations. Diceru takes about an hour to cap out until your pet gets mad but it's just one of those clicky games that you, you click through mindlessly this is one that's fun to do while you're just watching whatever you like to watch on YouTube or something um, you can also get some lottery tickets from this so that's a, a passive way to try to get the neo pets lottery uh, avatar and I'm gonna just try to play this until I get something just so you can see all right, so I finally got a food item from Dicer. I got a meaty pot pie. Those are good to save for employment agency. And then if we were to price check meaty pot pie, we can see they're going for relatively cheap. So you might try to sell that if you want, but my preference is, is to save it, hoard it, hold on to it for when I, those times that I do feel like playing employment agency, which we'll, we'll do a round of that here in a bit. So that, that's one of the perks of Diceru is essentially just it's, it's a mechanism to feed your employment agency activities. Another way you can generate or get items is by hanging out at the money tree. To get to the money tree, you got to go to Neopia Central and go here. You have a cap of 10 items per day. So think of the money tree, secondhand shop and rubbish dump all kind of share that 10 item max pool. You'd want to hang out at the rubbish dump if you're working on that avatar, especially and some Sometimes you can get some cool items from here, like a Derrigan paintbrush, like a old school bottle fairy, like some healing potions. Um, but most people hang out here when they're looking for that avatar. And then the secondhand shop, that is where you see wearables. So like I want to nab these drumsticks because I know that they are good for the coincidence. So now I can only get nine free items for the day. And if we remember the drumsticks had that crazy spike in price at one point. So now I'm just kind of retroactively hoarding them. Same with this uh, Chia Clown punching bag. That's another thing that like, so my short term memory, I try to remember where I got frustrated or what I had to buy from the coincidence. And that's usually what I'm on the hunt for when I am hanging out in the abandoned attic, when I am hanging out at the money tree, these have dropped back down. But I remember having to pay like a thousand, two thousand, for this one item. And that could also just be another money-making strategy for you. If you're paying attention to what the coincidence is asking for every day, like that is a strategy people use is buying up all these items that are as they're cheap and then reselling them for more when demand suddenly spikes. So that, that's a strategy people also like to use. So let's go check to check in at the money tree again. Money tree is my favorite spot. That's usually where I spend the most time. Just hang out here, refreshing, seeing what looks good. If I were to say off the cuff, if I'm being lazy, this 
scrawny fish might come in handy for coincidence this icy snowball might come in handy for coincidence coconut key ring might come in handy but i already have that short-term working memory that I, I have enough of these things in my safety deposit box that i'm going to keep going and every now and again you'll get lucky someone will chuck a code stone in here someone will chuck a, a rare stamp i've gotten a rare stamp from the money tree before i do tend to avoid any of the just big bags of neo points these days because i can generally make my own neo points myself so i don't go for that but bags of money can also appear in the money tree um, and then this spongy mound I actually want to try to grab because that would be good for fairy festival next year but I missed it I did stock up on rotten beetroots for a hot minute because I did end up having to buy them one time for the coincidence but you'll see a lot of other people just chucking what they don't want from the dailies in here common etiquette for some of the things that you throw into the money tree is some people get frustrated by seeing all these flutters and grunt of the wises and some like this trash like rotting driftwood because the the antithesis is why wouldn't you just discard it so i know discarding items can seem scary sometimes but the thing about discarding items is that there is a long 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 term goal avatar for discarding items i believe it's called the rubbish avatar i'll have to pop that up on screen but when i'm keeping like the broken fishing pole and rotten footwear for example i chuck that into my safety deposit box and then when i get a wild hair and i've mass like maybe a hundred or two hundred of those complete junk no use anywhere items then i'll go on a discard party and just pull a lot of those items out and and discard them just building up and working towards my hopeful eventually getting that discard avatar one of these days so that's another reason to hang on to those one np or seemingly junk items is a you don't know when the value is going to suddenly rise we've seen a lot of weird inflation happening which could be a money-making opportunity and two um there, there's an avatar you can work towards now if you've already gotten that avatar you can you can be a good citizen and just delete your junk items or you can go to the trading post and do some junk lot trading there so we are going to talk about the trading post today but i want to see if i can, can nab anything good while we're at the money tree the unfortunate part about hunting and staking out items is that a lot of it really depends on your own short-term memory and and what you're keeping eyes for and what you're looking for and once when the money tree isn't moving as quick as you want that's when you kind of hop over and I, I like to play some card games while I'm waiting for a bigger refresh in this pool set you can also get some NC mall stuff if you hang out at the money tree if that's of interest to you okay get it do I get it do I get it so this scorchy piggy bank is an example of something I'm specifically hoarding for Fairy Festival. It is very cheap because, and sometimes I like nabbing pet pets if I can. Um, it's a very cheap item right now because it is a drop in the daily quest log, but it is a rarity of 130 plus. So that's why I've been quietly hoarding those in hopes that Fairy Festival next year will at least work similarly to how it did in 2023. We'll just have to see how that goes. That's why I'm not spending too much money, just kind of quietly keeping the things I obtain um, just in case that Fairy Festival doesn't pan out the way it did in 2023 and i have to change strategies there but that that's a no harm no foul hoarding strategy i would say because if i do just need to offload them and sell them all i can just pop them in the shop and there i go sometimes i'll just grab the food items that i see that i just don't have and i I like collecting food items very casually because food items are one of those weird categories where, you know, sometimes things can be five Neo points and then surprise, surprise, sometimes things can be a thousand to five thousand Neo points and those are really good to resell. All right, Deaver is another thing that I have been grabbing up as I see them because A, they've been frequent because they've been dropped in the daily quest log, but they're also Rarity 104. <laughs> so that's why I stopped <laughs> playing with Deaver as a pet pet to zap because I realize these guys are super cheap and have a good rarity. So let's take a peek at what they're doing in the shop wizard just so we all remind ourselves. So 200 right now, so not quite as cheap as I thought, but that, that's been, you know, fluctuating up and down, up and down. So right now I'm putting every Thing I don't want to get stolen explicitly into my safety deposit box because I've earmarked uses for all of these items. So Deaver is for Fairy Festival. This punching bag is for the coincidence. This meaty pot pie is for Employment Agency. And I'm going to leave this omelet out because that's going to come in handy for our next activity, which is hanging out in the trading post. I do this quietly a lot. There's some interesting things that happen in the trading post. At least it's interesting to me. And I will hang out by going to Browse Lots and Newest 20 and just kind of kind of see what's going on out there see if anything looks interesting to me so I tend tend to avoid any of these lots that say none but the my 
My eyes did perk up at this purple Kugel plushie because that is a rarity 105. Um, I don't, I think this Bang Bang Nag might have some value too. But generally, if someone doesn't have a description, that might mean they're transferring items between accounts or something else is going on. So I usually just kind of mm -mm, avoid that. I usually like them to say free or something else. So you'll see a lot of free. Please see my other lots for more items. But a lot of nuns right now. The other day, I also saw something wild in that someone was asking for pieces of obsidian for junk lot I, junk lots similar to this i think yeah junk lots similar to this they're just like hey i want 10 pieces of obsidian so then that told me like oh okay i should maybe start clicking this obsidian quarry once a day just to get my free piece of rock because that might come in handy if I'm hanging out at the trading post. And then it also is you get some casual exposure to what's happening with some of those bigger items in the market. Like someone's trying to sell the seasonal attack P for 200 million right now. Sometimes you'll see some ridiculous prices, let's be real, but okay. So this one jumps out to me because they're saying free, please see my other lots. But I see this Usul Bat plushie, which I am quietly saving up for fairy festival potentially next year. So when I make an offer, this is where your omelets can come in handy because omelets do trade really nicely nice. This is not a rarity 102 plus omelet. And then depending how rich I'm feeling that day, I'll throw in a little money. Sometimes I'm super generous and try to do a couple thousand. Other times I'm trying to lowball. To, to be honest, I'm lowballing out there. But hanging out in the trading post is how I happened upon a really good deal on a Christmas Christmas rock is because someone had put it out there in a free lot and I was like, okay. I paid 5,000 for it just to be generous for their, their free lot and I was able to get a really affordable Christmas rock that way. So I do like hanging out here just for, for the item exposure and just to potentially get a really good deal on something. So this one, for example, we have someone that wants 2K for this. I don't think anything in here is explicitly worth 2K. These soothing stones could come in handy for the coincidence. Everything else, eh, not not entirely. So th that's a hard pass. They want want too much money for that. Here's another free lot. If you're working on that pack rat avatar, these kind of lots might be interesting to you. So I would recommend just throwing on a whole omelet on a lot like this. See how it goes. If you want to sweeten the pot, add a little bit more money to that. But here, 3K lot. Th this, if I had some more cash, I'm in kind of a savings mode right now. So I'm not excited to, to spend cash like this, but this could be a good value if you're trying to save for the upcoming plot. And then you might find deals like this where someone wants an ultra platinum Nurk mid, but they only want 95K for it. So if you nabbed that, you could flip that and resell it in your shop for probably 120 to 140 for the ultimate platinum. So you can make a little small profit on stuff like this too. So there's there's a lot of things going on in, in the trading post. I probably could do a dedicated video of just the politics and etiquette of, of the trading post, but it, it's a fun place to hang out. I would prefer to hang out here and see what people are talking about and wanting over the Neo boards, honestly. If you're trying to learn items, this is another great thing to do. So this lot is really appetizing because this is a good employment agency lot. Um, all of these items get asked for frequently. The payout might not be great, but if you can get a bunch of these items for free, then the payout is pure profit anyway. Got another interesting free lot. This Ogren plushie and this Tonu plushie would come in handy for the coincidence. Everything else, not so much, but you could get a free book if you haven't read that book to your pet. So sometimes those book lots are also nice just to kind of nab some extra reading material for your pet that you read, read to. All right, and we got an uh, offer accepted. So what did we get? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, that's right. We wanted this Oozle Bat plushie. Also, this Kraliden Defender plushie does come in handy for the coincidence also. So now let's take a look at employment agency, see if my hoarding and, and, and has paid off there. So to do employment agency, I usually open a safety deposit box tab first, and then I go to employment agency in Fairyland. I do have a dedicated video just all on the strategies for how to participate in employment agency, if that's something that is of interest to you. Probably could update that one a little bit because I have improved my strategy. Also, the competition has been heating up a little bit in employment agency. Agency, but we're sticking with basic jobs today. I usually go to the very end, see what's looking good. Okay, so off the bat, I see these garlic bread halves. Those can be drops from uh, from Diceroo, and I just see how many I have. And I have saved three. I only need two for this job, so I pull them out, apply for the job, boom, instantly made 4,000 Neo points. That's why I do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> let's see what else is looking good. Because sometimes I, I do still buy items for um, employment agency from time to time. Can of Neocola, but you need six. I know I don't have enough of those off the top of my head, but once again, that's a relatively affordable item that you do get from Dicearoo. Then I just kind of click through, see what's looking good. If I could get fast enough, that might be interesting. Let's go see if I'm fast enough today. So I'm going to go back to my safety deposit tab, quickly open the Bazaar tab, because that is where the Neo Homes Superstore is, where you can get an unlimited supply of all things Neo Home. That's only 483 Neo points for that black floor tile, and I only need two of them, but I know someone else knows this strategy, and I got to be fast. So let's see if I did it in time. Great. So I paid 43 times two is about 900 Neo points. I got back 2,100 Neo points. So that's about over a thousand K profit. So cool. My other goal with employment agency is just if I am going to do employment agency for the day, just make sure I'm doing at least my five. But I like to knock out my three first and then I wait, do some Dicearoo, come back in 10 minutes, do another round, wait another 10 minutes with some Dicearoo and then come back. You could also do these smaller pools like this if you do happen to have like four sandals hoarded, but your payout just won't be that great. Keep that in mind. And now we're just looking for anything else that I might have hoarded that has a decent payout. I already know I don't have enough <laughs> garlic bread halves anymore. I wiped out my stash there, but I could choose to pull one out and then buy one if I wanted to. But for the point of this exercise, we're just going to be looking for, for things we have. Okay, fried shrimp. I know that's a Dicearoo food item. I'm going to double check. I only have one. I need three, so I'm going to pass on that one. And there we go, meaty pot pie. Let's see how many pies I got. Oh, I should have searched for meaty. I only got one of them. So I'm going to pass again on that. Oh, so this one only needs two can of Neocola. To Neo <laughs> I was going to say token again. Uh, only needs two cans of Neocola, if I can spell Neocola correctly. Let's see how many I got. I only have one, but I'm going to go ahead and buy a second one since we saw how cheap those were today. And if I happen to miss this window, then I can save it for another time because those come up pretty frequently. So only 280 for the one can that I'm missing, which is not bad at all. Go back to employment agency knock it out, made a quick little 900 Neo point profit. So got to pay attention to those things, but we talk more about that in my dedicated employment agency video. Well, that is kind of the basic overview of what I'm looking for when I am item hunting or just messing around on the site. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm saving for a rainy day outside of, you know, morphing potions and, and whatnot. But really a lot of the advent calendar stuff I've just been sitting on waiting things to sell. Just once again, if it's that you could get a thousand for it, that's kind of my personal threshold. If I don't have any reason to hang on to it, but really all, all of this item strategy is about, you know, what things do you do on Neopets? What goals are you saving for? And what your main, what your missions are when you're, when you're on the site, like for books, for example, like you might not think it's worth to read any book to your pet because it's really not. It's just a vanity stat to see your intelligence increase. So books might be something that you really want to resell. And again, I'm not a restocker. So there, there's a whole category of item strategy that I'm not even talking about. Uh, Mrs. Grandpa TV is a great resource if you're interested in more restocking or want to learn more about it or see how a professional does it because Mrs. Grandpa is a professional <laughs> restocker. So th there's some lots of little rabbit holes you can get into. And then the other thing is just things that tickle your fancy I think we should talk about a little bit that's you know gallery can be a good place for that but there are items I buy and hold on to just because I think they're hilarious like the escaped pixel is one that comes to mind what did I find there was some hot dog the other day that I thought was batshit that I was like I want to buy that and keep it not even put it in my gallery but just for myself this neopian central hot dog so that's also some things you might find in someone's safety deposit box is just things that make them happy or laugh but the, the transition for me of, you know, keeping something in my safety deposit box versus putting it out there in the gallery is really gallery is items I want to show off. So right now working on my, my Apple gallery with a small section of treasures and retired items. But that's another thing you can do with items is get into starting a gallery and organizing items in a way that makes your soul happy. All right, well, that's all I got for this one. Let me know if you have any other questions or if I just completely overlooked something that you do with your items. I'd love to hear all about it, but I hope your luck is better than mine and I will catch you next time. Bye.